Uh, what are rocket engine cycles? Get, getting, I, th I think getting more to your, towards your shirt question. You have a really good video called that. Uh, I mean, a lot of your videos that are technical are just exceptionally well done. So I just, I think um, you deserve all the props you get. I mean, thank you for, for doing this work. Really, 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 really well done. Uh, so it's called rocket engine cycles. How do you power a rocket engine? Uh, and you go through all the different options. Is there something you could say about uh, open cycle, closed cycle, full flow, um, all the different variants that you can use words to explain. <laughs> yeah, without all the pretty pictures. Yeah, without the pretty pictures. So ultimately, you know, like we said, we your, your ultimate goal is you want to get heat and pressure into an engine. So obviously at some point, you can either make really thick tanks of your rocket. You can like get it so thick that you store the propellants in really, really high pressures. But obviously like that doesn't scale very well. At some point your rocket's so heavy, you can't even leave the ground or, you know, it's just so much of your mass is just literally the walls of the rocket. So at some point people realize, hey, we could actually just pump the fuels and the oxidizer into the engine at a high pressure and in increase the pressure through a pump. Now, obviously a pump's going to require energy. You have to get that energy from somewhere. Um, and again, at some point people were like, well, rockets are, there's already rocket fuel here. You know, we'll just use some of the energy from the rocket fuel to spin these pumps. So that, that would be considered like open cycle, closed cycle, full flow stage combustion cycle is our, our ways to tap into the propellant. Actually, and then there's tap off expander cycle. I mean, all of them kind of do the same thing, but you end up uh, at some point spinning a turbine. Uh, you know, a, a turbine can take uh, some of the heat energy and the, and the, and the pressure uh, of an engine, and then they can, that can be connected to a shaft to pumps. And those pumps can, you know, increase the pressure of the propellants and force it into the combustion chamber. Right. Now, the difference between open cycle, closed cycle, full flow, all those, is what happens after the gas has flown through the turbine. So after you've used the turbine and spun up the energy, you know, spun up the engine, mm -hmm. what happens to that gas? So in an open cycle engine, you basically have like a separate small rocket engine in a sense. It's, it's a gas generator, they call it. And that will be used to create some, you know, take a little, we'll say 10% of your, the propellant flowing to the engine. Instead, you reroute it to like a smaller rocket engine called the gas generator. You point that at your turbine and that will spin your turbine up to, you know, ridiculous speeds, 30,000 plus RPM. And then after it spins, it's wasted most of its, its energy, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just dumped overboard. That would be open cycle. You're not worrying about it after that point, but you are left with a lot of unburnt, un, you know, unused fuel. A good amount of that fuel is just completely, and especially because the turbine, uh, you you have to keep it from melting, so you can't run it at like optimal ratios. Um, not necessarily stoichiometric. In a rocket engine, you actually don't want it to be near stoichiometric, where you're re releasing all the energy. You actually want to release. Um, you actually want to be throwing out the lighter molecules so it can be shot out faster. Generally, in the engine. So, um, but in order to have a turbine survive, you have to actually cool. You have to have the, the gas going through it. It can't be stupid, stupid hot or else you're just going to melt your turbine. So they normally, um, especially in the open cycle, you just run it really fuel rich. So there's a lot of extra fuel being pumped into it that will keep the temperatures at a reasonable, uh, you know, at a reasonable temperature. So you end up with this like dark sooty smoke pouring out of that gas generator. That's just unburnt fuel. It's just wasted fuel. It never got a chance to be used. Oh, interesting. You know, like in the combustion chamber, it's not, it's not being used to propel the rocket. You know, it's just being used to cool down the, the propellant that's being used to spin the turbine, that's being used to spin the pumps to push a lot of propellant into the engine. So, you know, it doesn't take too long before, you know, you're a greedy rocket scientist being like, look at all this wasted propellant, all this potential energy that's just literally being spewed out the side of the rocket. So that's where the closed cycle comes in. So now you have to get that propellant, take it from basically what was being wasted through the turbine and you're going to try pumping it back into the engine. Now, you don't literally just pump that that gas that's, you know, that hot, that gas into the engine because it's actually way too low of pressure uh, compared to the, the main combustion chamber. And by that point, by the time it's gone through the turbine, it's lost most of its pressure and heat to the turbine. So if you tried pumping it into the engine, you know, just taking that pipe and sticking it right into the combustion chamber, that the much higher pressure, hotter combustion chamber would just go backwards mm -hmm. and it Right. stall out the engine and yep. blow up the engine and whatever, yep. Yep. what have you. So what they actually do is they normally will send, um, there might be some variations of this, but the general concept is you actually flow all of your fuel or all of your oxidizer through the turbine. 
Mm -hmm. So that would be closed cycle. So there's fuel rich closed cycle, which would be you're flowing all of the fuel through the turbine or there's oxidizer closed cycle, which is where you're flowing all of the oxidizer that's going into the engine through the turbine. Mm -hmm. Now the trick here is you have to have that turbine after it's done its work. So after it's taken some of the potential energy, some of the heat energy from, we're now calling it a pre-burner, by the way, instead of it being a gas generator, mm -hmm. you now call that device that's that's creating pressure to spin the turbine. You're now calling that a pre-burner because it's just going, going to pre-burn some of your fuel or some of your oxidizer. The trick is that has to be, by the time it's gone through the turbine, it has to be higher pressure than the combustion chamber because otherwise it's going to go backwards still. So you really have to get that pre-burner up to ridiculously high pressures, like at least 20% higher than your main combustion chamber. And these combustion chambers, you know, we're talking about engines that are at, you know, 200, 100 to 200, even in SpaceX's Raptor engine, up to 300 bar in the main combustion chamber. So that's, what is that? 4,500 PSI, basically. Insane amounts of, of pressure inside these combustion chambers. So your turbine has to be even above that, or your your gas generator or your pre-burner, sorry, has to be higher pressure than that even in order to have the flow going the right direction mm -hmm. through the engine. So now you'll you'll have those closed cycles. You'll have fuel rich, you have oxidizer rich. Um, the tricks now, you start to get, it's crazy. There's just so many compromises. Every little decision you have of like, oh, I did this, now I, you know, well now, crap, it's gonna do this. For instance, fuel rich, if you ran kerosene, fuel rich, you know how I mentioned soot coming out of the gas generator, mm -hmm. Well, if you run soot um, through your through your engine like that and, and had it go through your injectors, like back into the engine, it'll clog the pores of the injectors and it'll end up blowing up the engine. The soot itself is so damaging that you can't really run a fuel-rich kerosene engine. What exactly is, is soot? So it's like fuel somehow mixed up with the smoke. Like what, I wonder what, what is it chemically? Is this some weird? It's mostly just carbon. It's carbon. mostly just that carbon, so that dark, smoke. solid, solid chunks of carbon. And it can cake up and just literally like, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like ash almost, you know, like uh -huh. at some point, you know, especially under those high pressures and high temperatures, it can physically build up and, you know, turn into like stalagmites and stalactites of, of carbon really hard, you know, for forged in a rocket engine carbon. I wonder how you figure all that out too. Is that to be experimentation? Some of that is chem. <laughs> Chemistry, like theoretical, but like you're gonna have to build the thing at scale and actually test it. And trial and error. Trial and error. There's <laughs> many decades of trial and error. <laughs> and many pieces of engines that you're trying to piece back together going like, what the hell happened here? Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Okay, so uh, so that's closed cycle. So how, how do we get to full flow? So in either of those situations, you're still actually just having the opposite. So if you're fuel rich, you know, all the fuel is going through the turbine, but um, only a tiny bit of oxygen is actually being put into that pre-burner to, to spin the pumps. And the rest of the, the rest of the oxygen is actually going through the pump, the primary pump and straight into the combustion chamber. Mm -hmm. Now, full flow, the idea is you're going to actually pre-burn both your propellants. Both your propellants are going to go through a pre-burner and they're both going to end up spinning one of the pumps. Mm -hmm. So you'll have a gas, uh, a fuel rich pre-burner and you're going to have an oxygen rich pre-burner. Each one of those is going to get just, you know, they're gonna heat it up just enough and get it up to just enough pressure to spin up that turbine as fast as they need to do to get the pumps up to the right pressure mm -hmm. and still have enough pressure through the turbine to overcome the pressure inside the main combustion chamber. And they're both going to arrive, both your fuel and your oxidizer are going to arrive in the main combustion chamber as hot gases already. So what was liquid oxygen is now gaseous oxygen. What was liquid methane is now gaseous methane. And they're meeting in this combustion chamber at still ridiculously high pressures again. And the for SpaceX's uh, Raptor engine, they're meeting at 300 bar, insane amounts of pressure. And then they uh, then they combust from there on. And because they're already a gas gas interaction, they're happy to burn. They're ready to they're ready to burn. They're they're ready to mingle as opposed to having a gas liquid interaction, which is what's a lot more normal. You know, you, you'll have two different states of matter, and they just might not. They might take a little more co you know coaxing to what's that word? Co yeah. Co Co coaxing? Coaxing? Co that doesn't sound like a... Does, that doesn't no. sound correct, right? Coaxing. Co coaxing, yeah. 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 All right. I don't know. We'll, we'll cut we'll that in post. A, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have Morgan Freeman uh, overdub us. <laughs> yeah, oh, each of us coaxing. Uh, they're, the they're fascinating just... <laughs> thing is <laughs> they're coaxed in, as gases in <laughs> the combustion chamber. that word? But um, yeah, they, they just take a little bit more... It takes more time in the combustion chamber to have 
all liquid and gas interaction like mixed together and and re- unleash as much of their energy as you can before it exits the system. Are uh, some of the trade-offs here in terms of efficiency, which which, which is most efficient, uh, and then also complexity of the design and the engineering, and the cost of the design and the engineering. Like, what are the different trade-offs between open cycle, closed cycle, and full flow? Yeah, it's it's a pretty. It's kind of like a. Uh, what's the the bears, uh, the Goldilocks? You know, like right. it's like you, you kind of generally the easiest is open cycle because you know you're just expelling the the exhaust gas, um, the gas generator exhaust. You're not having to worry about it. You just spin up that thing as much as you need and deal with it. Right, no big deal. Um, closed cycles offers ten to fifteen percent greater performance generally because you know you're not wasting that propellant. And, but it's, it's complicated. It's a lot more complicated, especially if you're doing oxygen rich. Now you're having hot gaseous oxygen Mm -hmm. uh, in your engine, which just generally wants to react with everything. It's just a recipe, like hot oxygen is just a recipe for things to catch on fire that shouldn't be on fire. So metals, you know, under those conditions, lots of times will just spontaneously start burning. You know, you'll actually turn your metal and it will now become fuel. You'll be engine rich before you know it because your hot oxygen <laughs> nice. is uh, is is eating and using that engine as fuel, basically. So um, oxygen rich is generally very hard, but that is what the Soviet Union ended up doing with almost their entire line of engines was close cycle oxygen rich. But, you know, so those two are kind of generally hard, but offer great performance benefits over open cycle. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, full flow is by far the, it's the ultimate of all of them. It's the, the most difficult, but it also has the most potential to be the most efficient. Starship, the Raptor 2, the, the, why is that engine using full flow? Because it's the best. I mean, it's just physics wise, if you're trying to extract as much energy out of your propellants, there there just isn't another cycle type that that is uh, better than it. But of course, it's very, very hard to develop. You know, so far to date, the RD-270 in the 60s was built. Um, there is a powerhead demonstrator built in the United States in the in the 90s and early 2000s, I think, maybe just the early 2000s. Um, that was just the just the power, just the the pumps and the turbines and the pre burners. No chamber, no nothing. That was a big deal. Only the United States took you know millions of dollars to just develop that. And then there's SpaceX's Raptor engine. 